Hi friends, Knife Detector here, and guess what? Got another knife video for you. If you're watching and it's early morning, good morning, my friends, and we have a wonderful day ahead. You know, God bless you, my friends. So I want to show you these two beauties. These guys don't mess around. And I'm making this video on an awesome suggestion by Tobias Gibson. He suggested I make this video. So what we have here are two classic knives, guys. You're going to notice right away. Those of you that know knives know this is a Schrade LB7, okay? And uh, what we have here is also another Schrade 6OT. So these are two classic knives. They've been around for a while, but one of these is definitely older than the other. So we're going to go over these uh, when they were made, and we're going to look at how possible, how possibly old they are. Uh, we're going to look at what they're made of. We're going to look at their weight. We're going to look at how long they are. We're going to make a comparison, a general comparison. And there are things I like about each one of these knives. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to analyze each one. Uh, first, we're going to do a comparison of what the materials are. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to check the length and we're going to check the weight on both of them. Okay, guys, so check this out. Let's start off with the most recent of these. Which one do you think is the most recent knife made? In other words, which is the younger of the two, the newer of the two? And it's going to have to be this one, guys. This is the 6OT. This is a Schrade 6OT. Now, this model uh, first came out in 1995, from what I can tell in research. This came out in 1995, and it's got this really pretty Delrin. Notice that this is a really good example. Uh, the Delrin really hasn't been hurt at all. I haven't carried this much. As you can see, it's got a little bit of rust happening there because, yeah, I have used this a few times. Um, I use it every now and then. Uh, I've cut some food with it uh, for whatever I need outside as well. This has a patina because this has been in a sheath for quite a while. Notice how it's shiny here around the edges. That's when it comes in and out of the sheath, right? And notice here there's a big difference with this one than with the Schrade. This one has a hole. It's got a lanyard hole in there. And notice that the lanyard hole also has a very pronounced patina, right? So that's pretty cool. I really do like this knife very much because of the Delrin. Uh, the Delrin just makes it very easy to grip. And it also, I think, and we're gonna find out, takes a little bit of weight off of the overall knife. The fact that it's kind of a bare head design and it doesn't have a bolster in the back kind of tells me that, you know, it might be a little bit lighter than the Schrade LB7, but we're gonna find out. Uh, we got, of course, brass liners. Notice the brass liners also have a patina that it's getting. I love brass. I love the patina that brass takes. See how polished this is right here? This is just a really good example of this type of knife, right? And it is a lockback, and uh, I believe this is stainless steel. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to close it. Let's see if it has snap after all these years. I believe this knife was probably made maybe in the uh, late 90s would be my best guess. Yeah, very good snap closed, very good snap open. Let's take a look at that spring. I don't know if you can see that spring. It looks like it has some kind of a, gosh, that even looks like it has like a double spring in there. Check that, check out that double spring design. And notice how clean it is in there too. It's got like kind of a little double spring design. That's interesting, right? Another interesting thing on the blade that I want to show you that I really like about this knife is look at this wedge. Back in 1995, they were making this faux edge or this wedge here on the blade. Look at how, how what nice lines that has. Check that out. I mean, that's just super pretty. Um, that looks really modern. It's like a modern twist on an older knife. I think that's really cool that they had forethought even back then to embellish the blade like that. Look at that beautiful grind. It's just good looking. It's really good looking and it's on both sides. Yeah, we're gonna see that. I don't believe the Schrade LB7 has that, but we're gonna take a look. So let's go ahead and let's set this down and we're gonna take a look at now the Schrade LB7. Now the Schrade LB7 is a classic design. They've been making this knife since around 1979. Now the first one of these that they made, they weren't making them with any number of designations, no serial numbers. But then sometime in the 1980s, they started adding serial numbers. Now my understanding is that the first serial numbers that were added did not have letter designations. And then as they started producing more and more and more of these, they started to add some letter designations. This one has a K and then there's a uh, five digits after it. I have a, I don't have 100% uh, clarity on, on how old this is, but I, my best guess would be mid 80s, early to mid 80s on this knife. So this puts this knife uh, probably about 
maybe 35 or so years old would be my best guess. And look at those beautiful rosewood handles. I mean, that's really the, the point of this knife. You know, a lot of people that wanted something a little bit more fancy than the Buck 110, and so they would get the Schrade LB7 because it's just a little bit fancier, has a little bit cleaner lines. Um, notice that these lines just naturally smoothed out a little bit. The edges are not as squared off and sharp as they were on the original, not the original, but the older Buck 110s, like the two dots. Uh, they had sharp lines and these are a little bit more polished, uh, easier to hold, uh, a little bit more friendly for your grip. You know, very nice. Just a pretty knife. It's a nice example. It's the, the knife that if you wanted to spend a little bit more money to get something a little nicer, this is the kind of knife you would have, right? And there's the blade. And uh, I believe it's stainless steel. It has a little bit of a switch, but not much. Let's check out that difference there. These are the two blades side by side. Notice that uh, pretty much the, the blade shape is generally there. It's the same. However, the uh, blade for the Schrade LB7, the lines are a little bit more smoothed out. And the one on the 6OT, they're a little bit more, have sharper edges, you know, kind of a little bit more, I don't know, reminds me kind of of like a, a space age looking blade. It looks a little bit more aggressive to me. Notice how it's got that little hump up here too. I think that's pretty cool. And then the other blade is basically the same blade. It's just a little bit more refined, a little bit more grinded down and smoothed out and polished. You know, I kind of like that about both. I like those things about both knives. Now, this one does come with uh, two bolsters, one in the back and one in the front, and it is a locked back design. Now, I have owned a lot of these straight LB7s. I have owned one that the spring broke uh, while I had it and the spring no longer functioned, you know. Um, let's see what we got in here. Notice we have one small little leaf type spring in there. And uh, it tends to fail on these, is what I noticed for some reason. I never had that issue with the Bucks. I've never had that issue with the Buck 110. But I've owned quite a few of these that I've bought used, and I've noticed that they have weak springs. So this is an older knife. Let's check out the spring on this knife. Now, you can tell by the blade, this thing has not had a great deal of use. It's had some use, but not a great deal of use. So let's see. Let's close it up. And uh, let's check the snap on that. Yeah, you see, I'm sure you noticed that this has a little bit of a lazy snap. So already I'm seeing an issue that that spring is starting to get a little bit weak on this knife, right? Snap open. Yep, positive engagement. Uh, there's a small amount of perceptible play, a very tiny amount. But, you know, that's expected with a knife this age. And uh, I don't want to tap this because I don't want to mar that or anything like that. But let's look at that, that uh, talk again. See, about right there, it should already be closing right there at that point, but it's not. It's not ready to close just yet. See that? It's a little bit lazy. It's a little bit lazy. That tells me that eventually, if I continue to use this, that that spring may fail at some point, you know? And it's a shame because this is a beautiful, beautiful knife. And I think that that probably is the only weak point of this knife. I think that if this knife had a stronger spring, it, they would just last so much longer. But if you have one of these, check out your spring. Check out um, how it snaps closed because honestly, they do tend to break the springs after a while. Okay, so another beautiful knife. Again, you got your brass spacers. Um, this actually looks like it's one solid piece. Notice right here, uh, you have, uh, this is connected. You have the bolsters and integral with the spacers and so forth. And uh, it's just a beautiful knife. This just is a big chunk of steel. So let's weigh them. Let's check the length first, okay? The length closed of this would be right around five inches exactly. The length closed of this would be, yeah, right around five inches, maybe slightly shorter, maybe four and seven eighths, quite possibly four and seven eighths. Let's see. Yeah, it's probably about five inches, both of them, okay? So the blades, they're about the same length. They're the same length, the blades. Not an issue with that. Okay, so let's check the weight. That's what we got there. And my guess would be that this one is a little bit lighter. The 6OT would be a little bit lighter, but we are about to find out. Now I'm gonna hold up the lanyard because I don't want that to have any impact on the weight. Hmm, having an issue with the scale, it's stuck on a number. OK, 
Okay. Let's see. Let's hold up that lanyard. And this is coming in at 6.2 ounces. 6.2 ounces means it weighs less than a buck 110, a full ounce less than a buck 110. And again, I'm thinking it's probably because this does not have a rear bolster. So let's check it out. Let's now try out the Schrade LB7. 8.1 ounces, guys. 8.1 ounces. And that is surprising to me uh, because that's pretty much almost a full ounce heavier than the Buck 110. That says a lot. That means that this is a bigger chunk of a knife and uh, this is a heavy duty knife. Now, I suspect it's because the liners are part of the bolsters. I suspect that's why it is. And I suspect it's because the bolsters are also thicker on this knife. But yeah, this is a heavy duty knife. Uh, if you're going to carry this in your pocket, you better wear a belt because if not, then you're going to be surprising a lot of people. Okay. So honestly, I feel that this should be a knife that you sheath carry. If you're going to carry this knife, I hope they allow sheaths where you live because this is a nice knife to have. You know, it's a very a strong, it's a very heavy, it's a good work knife. You know, it's a knife that you can have on the campsite and that you can take care of a lot of things with it. So, you know, it's a good knife to have, but sheath carrying it is probably the best way to go. Okay, guys, so this has been another episode of The Knife Detector. Um, I hope you guys are watching my videos. I want to thank all my new subscribers. Thank you so much, guys and gals. Appreciate very much you uh, liking and subscribing to my channel. Um, if you get bored, man, check out uh, some of my other videos. I got some older ones, guys. I have videos on all kinds of knives. If you like knives, check out my videos because I have knives that you may have never even seen or heard of before. Um, brands like Mikov you know, uh, Utica, maybe, maybe some brands out there that you didn't know existed, you know. So check out my channel. You know, if you're into modern knives, I got some modern knives too. You may want to check those out. Not as many as traditionals because traditionals is really where my heart is. All right, guys, this has been another episode of The Knife Detector. A happy Monday to all of you. And uh, oh, by the by, wish me luck, guys. I did a job interview recently. I hope it's a good move for me. You know, um, wish me luck. Send me a prayer. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.